chaotic, and it is, but when you're involved in it and you're existing inside of it, we are all at peace. If you get it, you love it. To those people, this is the most important thing. If you've seen the tray alive, you understand. People are just jumping all over the place. They just go crazy. It's the craziest band I've ever filmed, that's for sure. They go insane, and all the kids get in on it. It's probably the craziest thing, period, that I've ever filmed. We don't want to be separate from the crowd, we want to be with the crowd. Josh gets on the stage and he yells into the crowd, this microphone is your microphone, the stage is your stage. The audience very much so was a part of it in, in every way, shape, or form. And This music isn't just chaos, it's, it's music that is expressing a freedom that we have. Like the best therapy there is, is going out that night and just like giving it your all. And no matter how messy or, or not perfect it might be. There are flaws, but just keep being human. It's real, it's humans playing human music. There's like beauty in that craziness. We met up and we started talking about the future, this record, or we recorded another, this, that, and the other. The more we talked about it, the more we really felt at peace about it, you know? The idea of like, what if we ended with one wing? It was so crazy how it happened, like a collective. All at once we came to the decision at the same time. No, are you serious? That's, that's the main reaction. <laughs> Most people couldn't believe that it was ending. Just because of the way our fans are, they were so passionate about the band. It was, it was a bittersweet moment. But it was also the perfect time for uh, the closure. There are other things more important to me, like family and stuff like that. So I was okay with letting it go. I got a text from Derek one day saying that he wanted me to help out with a video about the chariot. I got really stoked and I asked him what the video was about and he said it was a farewell announcement video. <laughs> Heartbroken to say the least. I remember when Steven first told me that the chariot was breaking up. We set out to, to make that farewell video. Prior to it being released, up until that point, we were still a band that wasn't breaking up. And once we released that video, there was no turning back. I almost didn't even believe it myself until we released it. When Derek was editing the video, we were trying to find a song that match the tone and the mood of the video. We wanted the feelings to be less about the sadness of them breaking up and more about that celebration of their 10 long years together. We played around with a few songs. My friend Rob Fisher is in a band called Salvage My Dream and he just makes the most beautiful music. We're Big fans of his band. I mean, I listen to Salvage My Dream literally every single day. And for that farewell video, we used his song Alpha Centauri. We laid it down on the, on the video and it just was perfect. It just fit the mood so well. We wanted to be happy, like the song isn't necessarily a sad song. Just the way that that song just sort of builds up and just explodes at the very end with like all of the instruments playing at the same time at the one point. We wanted it to feel like a celebration.
yeah, that was one of the realest moments of my life, for sure. I can only imagine that people genuinely felt like they had a piece of the band with them, and now to have that die without being able to say I'm okay with it was very hard. Chariot, final tour, and you're just like, this sucks. At the time, I was, at, I was at peace with the band breaking up, but then I watched the video all the way through and I was like, <sighs> like, <sighs> like that's, as heavy, like it was such a, like, man, I, wow, that's, that's a lot. I very much so wanted it to be a very peaceful thing and a very, a thing that we could, you know, travel around and say goodbye at least one more time, you know. And, and to say thank you, so. We posted it, and I remember being so nervous. I was just like, I don't know what to do. It's a little overwhelming when something like that sort of yanks the rug out from everybody, and all of it comes in at once. The first show we did, I think it hit me for the first time that this was the last tour and we were on a tiny stage. I just had to get on my knees in front of everyone and just let them know how honored I was. I remember feeling so overwhelmed. That's the first time I got emotional, was just realizing, oh, this is like truly the beginning to the end. seen people come to chariot shows and be like this is noise I don't like this at all I don't want to I don't like this one bit you know but then they'll go home and listen to the record and hear the nuances and the music and they'll be like wow this is really cool and they'll go see him again they'll be like I get it It can very much so make you feel like you literally can take over the world. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough room for me in the chariot's van, so what I ended up doing was following them around in my RV. I remember just this scraggly young man in Converse coming out of this jalopy. And I was just like, man, this guy is out of his mind. I thought of Winnebago Man. I thought, I kind of wish we were touring in that thing. <laughs> it should be on like a t-shirt, like get retro. I loved the RV. However, I did not see it making as far as it did on the tour, considering it broke down on the way to the first meeting place. You remember that? Yeah, I do. We were on our way to South Carolina, and like literally, as we were leaving the house, we were like, all right, here we go. This is it, last tour. Let's go, let's go, here we go. <laughs> Probably something like three or four miles outside of the house. He had some problems, so I kind of thought he might have some more issues along the tour. But I got it fixed, and 
everything was cool. It made it, like that's the miracle of it. It made it everywhere. It, it was a good change from just being in the van, being able to lay down, just be in a different environment, talk to Derek, hang out, because I've never been on tour with Derek before. We were always excited whenever we would get to a venue and we had no idea what the venue was going to be like and it'd just be just some warehouse or floor, uh, old school, like in Virginia. It was so cool. Like when we got in there, I was like, oh, this is going to be cool. The backstage rooms were like these little kind of tiny square rooms. The room we played in was like this big, well-lit room. and. Uh, that's kind of our element. I feel like it's all lights on, play on the floor, everyone kind of on the same level. I don't like being high up, you know? I'd rather be right there, eye to eye, and engage. Before every show, I put on my headphones and I just run and skip and jump around and jump in circles and jump as high as I can and sprint and flail around and I think it's kind of just to make sure that whatever I'm doing on stage isn't the first time I'm doing it that day. My band Rebuker got asked to be a part of the Chariot's final tour and a part of that was being able to play drums with them for a few short bits of their songs. Then we get on stage I set up my pedals and my amp and my cab and my guitar and that whole moment's a blur because I'm just kind of waiting to explode. The Chariot has never been a band to be listened to only. It's to be experienced for sure.
I love touring. You know, a lot of people take road trips and it's some of the best times they had their lives. And touring is like one of the most fun things you can do ever. <laughs> Some of the things I've seen dozens of times now, but it's still like you may see it in a different light or you may see it with fresh eyes. You may see it in a, you know, whole new different way. Driving from the east to the west coast is one of my favorite parts about touring the United States. I love driving through the plains and I love driving through the desert, especially the desert. We always had this thing where we would be like maybe in Arizona or something in the middle of the desert. We would always stop in the middle of the night while no cars are around, pull over in the middle of the desert and just get on top of the van and look at the stars. Nothing else going on. It's just us and looking up at this entire huge universe. When you're out there in the middle of nothing, you can do that and just see shooting stars like every five minutes is, it was awesome. I remember just being like, we have to stop and jump a few fences and just climb up those hills and just kind of take it all in for one last time. It, it truly is one of my favorite parts about touring. You can just see millions of stars. To actually do it when nothing is around where you can see every single star is breathtaking. They're so far away and we're just so tiny. Looking up at this big open nothingness.
busy, busy bee Walking to and fro What if we close our eyes? What if we don't wake up? First time I met Angela, we did a CD release for Wars and Rumors of Wars. Up comes this nerdy girl with glasses, you know, wanting us to sign something, and now we're awesome friends. We found out that she just has an amazing voice. Josh had sent me a message asking me to rework old lyrics of his to make it sound like a hymn. When it came time to do One Wing, we're like, we need to get Angela on a song. So they brought me down to Atlanta to just record that track and just have it be a little part of their album, and it's awesome. You know, we couldn't wait to do it live and just hear people sing, you know, be able to sing to it and not just scream to it. That's when the emotions hit at that show. I remember a few times that night, I, I just wanted to cry. I remember looking over at Josh and seeing him feel emotional, and it made me start feeling emotional, and I was like, oh no. We had checked everything on the mics and stuff, and we were kind of ready to go. And the sound guy just goes, all right, whenever you're ready. Those words, it was very much so like, all of a sudden, whenever we're ready to end this. He probably says that every night. But for me, and, and I think for all four of us on stage, I think it meant something very, very different. It was emotional for all of us to even start that show, let alone the ending of it. It was real at that point. I saw Stevis break down towards the end. I remember Josh hugging me right before we started, and he said, I don't want it to end. I call it a moment of silence, but it's like uh, right before we go into that second song, it's just this like feedback moment. And for me, it's a very like uh, very very therapeutic specific moment that I can take as long as I want. First song's done, which is like we're in the show. You know, there's no, none of the you know like is this gonna work? Second word, it's like here we are. And I just was sitting there and like the song, uh, I I have to kind of scream before we all go into it. And, I couldn't do it. Like, I literally couldn't do it. I look over at David, and he's bawling, and I'm bawling, and I just can't do it. And long live, like, the double meaning that comes into play when they're chanting that is so heart-wrenchingly humbling.
remember getting out into the crowd and standing up on my kick drum, looking behind and, you know, seeing like a hundred kids on stage up there with Stevis and Josh and Brandon. And that was unbelievable. It was kind of like the perfect finale for me. That final show at the Seven venue was literally just a celebration. The Seven venue will make you feel at home. The staff and everyone there made it their goal and their mission to love people unconditionally. That venue has changed so many people's lives. If you need a place to stay, they let you stay there, sleep on the couch, whatever, cook you food. It's a refuge for a lot of people and it's just a killer music venue. I'll forever be grateful for that place and the people who work there. Once it was home, once it was in Douglasville, I almost broke down <laughs> simply because it, it was like being with my family. It didn't feel like a normal show. I felt like I was just playing to all of our friends and family. I felt like there were no strangers there. And the people that showed up from out of state or out of the country that showed up to that show got a piece of, you know, our home, how we grew up. I'm proud to be able to say that we had so many people around the world that believed in us. Having people come up and tell us about what the chariot means to them and um, the band has done for them and just hearing that, it's like, that's all that's ever mattered. You know, that's everything. I love you. Here we are, you know, for, you know, the last show, and people are just chanting, and it was, it was very, very, very like overwhelming to, to the like to the most literal sense. I mean, I, I, I couldn't pull it together. excited about playing a show, equally bummed that this is our last show, equally emotionally a wreck. 
There's literally nothing, but I just had to do it. There was nothing except for just, at some point you're gonna have to carry on. You have to, to finish this. very real I mean it was very much so like it was the last show but like each song like that was it that's the last time that song will be played and I remember thinking about it in, in those terms like when a song would stop I remember just being like that's done that will never be played again
after everyone was out of the venue, everybody was out. I was one of three people leaving and I saw Josh and he was just like, <laughs> he's like, hey, I mean, it's been real. And I was like, yeah, it has. He's like, I guess I'll see you around. I was like, yeah, I gave him a hug and it was cool, you know, it was heavy and it was amazing and I'm just really grateful for it. in life's pleasures and count its many tears while we all sub sorrow with the poor there's a song that will linger forever in our ears oh hard times come again no more Tis the song, the sigh of the weary. Hard times, hard times, come again no more. How we tremble before thee, have mercy we implore. Oh, hard times, come again no more. While we seek mirth and beauty and music light and gay, there are frail forms fainting at the door. Though their voices are silent, 
their pleading looks will say oh hard times come again no more tis the song the sigh of the weary hard times hard times come again no more how we tremble before thee have mercy we implore oh hard times come again no more tis the song the sigh of the weary hard times hard times come again no more how we tremble before thee have mercy we implore oh hard times come again no more oh hard times come